Hey everybody, you're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for Monday, August 27th, 2012. Let's dive into this week's quick episode with our first story. A few weeks back, I talked about a big Dropbox breach where a particular Dropbox employee stored the uh, information for a lot of other Dropbox users. Uh, at the time, Dropbox promised to uh, enforce two-token authentication. Well, this week, Dropbox released their experimental version of their two-token authentication setup. So if you're a Dropbox user, I recommend you go to Dropbox and you try this experimental setup. Uh, while two-token authentication does add a little more complexity and, and kind of removes a little bit of convenience by texting your phone with a special one-time pad every time you want to authenticate, it really does increase your security. So if you put any sort of sensitive documents on Dropbox, I recommend you set up this two-token authentication. Another story from this week is an important Firefox update. On Tuesday, Mozilla released Firefox 15, which among other things fixed 16 security vulnerabilities. Some of the security vulnerabilities allow drive-by download attacks. They're memory corruption flaws that if you visit the wrong site, they can force your computer to download malware. So if you're a Firefox user, be sure to go get that update. In hacktivist-related news, this week brought us the Project Hellfire data breach. Uh, Anonymous-like hacking group calling themselves Team Ghost Shell apparently breached over a hundred different websites, probably using SQL injection techniques. And this week they posted on Pastebin a bunch of, of links that, that contained over a million database records to these hundred various sites. So this means uh, they've stolen personal information uh, to a lot of different people, uh, people like politicians, some banking sites, uh, and, and many other sites on the internet. You might want to check out the link in our WatchGuard Security Center post to see if one of the sites you frequent was breached. To finish off this episode, by far the biggest story this week was a huge zero-day Java vulnerability. In fact, two different zero-day Java vulnerabilities. Over the weekend, FireEye, a security company, disclosed information about attackers in the wild exploiting a previously unknown flaw in Java 1.7. And throughout the week, information about this uh, exploit continued to grow. Shortly after FireEye disclosed the vulnerability, the Rapid7, the, the current owners of Metasploit, also released a Metasploit exploit that, that demonstrated and leveraged this vulnerability as well. Later in the week, some other security researchers found a second unpatched Java vulnerability. Now this is a very dangerous vulnerability, and as soon as news of this exploit spread, many other uh, underground exploit frameworks started leveraging it. For instance, the Black Hole Web Exploit Framework Kit has built in this, this unpatched Java vulnerability into their framework kit. Later in the week, news even came out that a hundred different websites uh, on the internet were already leveraging this vulnerability. But there is good news. On Thursday of this week, Oracle did the unprecedented out-of-cycle security patch. Oracle usually has a quarterly patch release cycle, so if they followed that patching cycle, we wouldn't have received an update for this vulnerability until two months from now. However, on Thursday, Oracle released an out-of-cycle patch that fixes uh, the first zero-day vulnerability as well as two other ones as well. So if you're a Java user, which most people do have Java installed in their browser, you definitely want to go and get this Oracle patch. Now, if you can't patch immediately, there's some other tips you might want to follow. First of all, I highly promote something called NoScript. If you're a Firefox user, NoScript is an extension that will disable uh, JavaScript, Java, ActiveX, and many other dynamic HTML scripting languages by default, thus preventing malicious sites from automatically exploiting these vulnerabilities. Now, many legitimate sites do use JavaScript, but NoScript allows you to easily allow them on the sites you trust. Another option if you're a Chrome user is something called Click to Play. If you go into Chrome's advanced settings, you can turn on Click to Play, which will disable Java by default on certain sites unless you actually 
clip them. So those are two mitigating factors. On top of that, many people are recommending you actually disable Java if you can. In fact, Apple's already taken this stance in Safari. They disable Java in Safari by default and force you to enable it. Lately, we've seen many, many attackers definitely targeting Java. There's been many vulnerabilities that have been in Java that have shown up on many of these underground hacking kits. So Java is very dangerous right now. Hopefully in the future, HTML5 will take over and we may not need Java for some of the dynamic sites we visit today. But in any case, if you use Java, definitely go get Oracle's patch. It's very, very important. Now, if you're a WatchGuard customer, do you know we're making sure you have IPS signatures for these attacks? In fact, we definitely catch the Metasploit variant of this particular attack today with a generic signature we use to catch Metasploit Java-based attacks. Well, that covers this week. If you learned anything from this episode, I hope it's that you go out and get Oracle's big Java patch. As usual, if you'd like more regular security news, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog, or more importantly, follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.